up oh, ward comp. So we'll be doing the Crichton maps. Um, we're actually going to do Brisbane Wildlands first, and then we're going to do the Crichton maps. What's up, Manny? How are you, man? Alrighty. Alright, so we're going to quickly just smack out Brisbane, and then we're going to do Keswick Hills, Yandaran Fields, and Harathi Hinterlands. Alright. So... There's technically three regions left, but because Ore is a very, very small region, I might try to squeeze that in. So basically... Ba basically tomorrow's stream, um, so the next stream I do, will pretty much round off the guide. That, that, that'll, that'll pretty much just be the absolute finish for it. There's a, just... wait, what? Just some movie... oh, you're doing some movie world, nice. Yeah. So, when I finish the second map, so we'll do this map first and then the second map, um... I will show you guys character progression, so how long we've spent, so just to give you guys a rough timer, how long we've been uh, doing this, um, regarding to how close we are on the world complete. All region is the easiest region to explore because no heart. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Or is very, very fast to do because there is just no heart progression there. So it's like really, really easy to do. Yeah. Maybe today, um, if I fi depending on how fast I finish um, the part 4 of the speedrun guide, um, I'll consider actually maybe doing like some movie world roaming or something afterwards. Like I'll just do some PvP or some movie world roaming. If I feel like I still have like some time left. Maybe. Okay, that's an evade frame, we're gonna ignore that for a little bit. The flop. How was the green stripe cord? So the green stripe I'm called, you can do exclamation mark routes to see exactly what it is. The green stripe that I'm using for my world complete guide for you guys is called augmented terrier. It basically gives me, it's basically the framework of the guides to do. Everything else regarding hearts is just brain knowledge. Oh my guild is trolling me. Who was it? Oh, yes, the villain. Oh, I'm off her. Um, it's not like Arc DPS because Arc DPS is an actual add-on. This is an overlay. Augmented Interior is an overlay. Wait, really? You can buy Hero Point Scrolls to complete HP easily. Yep. That's one big thing. Um, so, for this particular hut, the hotspot is jump inside the water pool and kill all the- rack up all the um, scales inside for this particular hut. This is the hotspot for this hut. Aggro every single thing, try not to die, and you can just pretty much nuke them all in a second. Get a decent amount of um, completion. Yo, what? what's up, his client? How are you, man? I forgot to enter the giveaway. Oh, that's unfortunate. How did you forget to enter it? <laughs> you were here since like the be almost the beginning of the giveaway. So yeah, um, priority for this heart is jump inside the pit there, kill all the scales first before you do anything else. That's the first important thing there. Oh, 
Yeah, what's up, Stefan? How are you, man? Good man, just woke up. How's the stream been? The stream's been pretty good. We just smacked out strike missions. Now I'm gonna join do the fourth part of the speedrun guide. Um, so again, assuming everything goes according to plan and that tomorrow will be the last day I do the speedrun guide, because I should finish this character by tomorrow for the guide. Um, I will download all of the Twitch videos because for any of those any of those people that are curious, um that haven't been here before, all the videos for the speedrun guide are saved on Twitch currently. I will download them all and I will upload them to YouTube um, a bit later. Um, just to keep the videos permanently. Um, you know what? I don't need to do any more stuff here. Let's go hand in the heart. Is the is this recommended for your first character? No, this is not recommended for your first character. What I'm using is not recommended for your first character. What I would recommend for your first character would be Taco. Guild Wars 2 Taco, which I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard about. That is a lot more end user friendly, a lot more beginner friendly guide to doing mod complete than what I'm using. Almost done here. Yeah. Almost on the side. I kind of know my way around, but I started a week ago with this game. Mm. If you're com like, okay, I don't know if you've done a full vault complete in that one week. If you haven't done a lot of Central Terrier. I would still recommend using all, um, Guild Wars 2 Taco than what I'm currently running. This is more designed for, like, I mean, you can run this as a beginner if you want to. It's just that Guild Wars 2 Taco has a lot more nourishing information regarding particular hearts. Like, it'll tell you, like, some of the faster ways to do hearts. Like, this heart, like, this heart does, um, let's say, let's say that you're doing a heart that needs to do, like, you can interact with things, kill things, hand in things. Guild Wars 2 Taco will tell you some of the hearts, like this gives this much percent, that gives that much percent, whereas Augmented Terrier is literally just raw routing. Like it's just routing, I don't really get any extra information, but it's also a lot easier to follow in my opinion, and the routes on this are more efficient than the one on Guild Wars 2 Taco. I can do walk up in three days easily using Taco. Yeah, but how fast do you do it?
Like, I can, I can technically do this in one afternoon. I can do one full run in one afternoon, but I'm not going to do that because that takes me freaking 12 hours. <laughs> Okay, um, there is a kind of, okay, when, generally there is an event that sometimes spawns here. If the event is up, prioritize the event here. There is, um, if the event is not up, prioritize doing what I'm doing, which is just interact with the shifting rocks, kill the adds that spawn from them. There is a couple of buckets down here, you can see down here, the scrit scrap barrels. Um, these, some of these barrels are actually modeled there twice, as in, you can interact with some of them twice in a row or more. Um... Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. So right here, we can interact with this barrel a couple of times here. So that's just going straight towards our heart, um, our heart progression. Some of these barrels have multiple models stacked on each other, so you can inter pretty much spam interact on them to get the um, heart progress done pretty quick. Twenty-four hours. Okay. Twenty-four hours is that's not bad. Not bad. Do populated zones go slower from sort from resource contention? Yes, 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 yes. Yes, they do. Like um, for part one, like you guys saw on summer part one and part two, um. We were struggling to get some parts done because there are other people around the area. There are some parts where if there are other people around, yes, it becomes harder to do. Marginally harder, not super harder. Okay, now this particular heart, there is a huge hot spot. And this is very, very top priority. I'm hoping that no one has come here and killed the ads. But when you get to this heart on the top right corner of Brisbane Wildlands, there are a bunch of bandits in this little camp here. Um, it looks like some of them haven't actually completely spawned yet, but come here. This is the very, very first thing you should do when you get to this heart. Prioritize coming here first before you do anything else. Just to cleave out all these ads and then go around and look for the bushes again. Again, this is slightly RNG, like anyone, actually, so we can see that some of the bandits are actually spawning again. That one, like, some of the bandits are already spawning here. Now prioritize coming here. Usually when no one has come here and actually touched these bandits, you can pretty much get like a nice 60-70% of your um, heart progress done. So we're actually pretty much got it completely finished here. Almost completely finished here. And that person looked like they just got there <laughs> shortly after us, so we already got all the kills there. But yeah, note that spot. When you do that heart, note that spot. Um, it looks like the event is up here. Yeah, okay, so this event looks like it just spawned recently. This is another thing, this is an alternative to the heart. If all the mobs are the, aren't aren't up, you can come down and do this event just to quickly kill the city ads there, because there are lots of ads you can kill there. One of the hearts, um, actually the heart I'm getting close to doing, actually has a small little guide on how to do the heart. Um, it's not really super informative, it's very very basic, and I will show you guys exactly the information it shows you. Um, this is Augmented Tyria telling me the information by the way. Um, I'll show you guys that in a moment. I think the best heart in this map is the one where you need to interact with... Okay, so uh, put an X in chat if you are familiar with a heart in this zone that pretty much is a bunch of puzzles, riddles, mathematical equations, and questions. If you are familiar with this heart in this zone, put an X in chat. It's pretty much in the middle of Brisbane Wildlands for anyone that may or may not know where it is. Okay, so some of you guys are familiar with that. Good. Now, how many of you know just about every single answer to the equations? Because <laughs> that's some next level memory. 
I want to show you guys how to go through that in probably less than a minute. <laughs> okay, so this is the hut that I'm talking about. So, Augmented Terrier, thankfully Noel actually included this in the Augmented Terrier Pro um, routing. So, see how we have a little 1 and a little 2 here? Basically, that means option 1, option 2. And that's how you pretty much get the um, heart done here. The fastest way to get this heart is actually interacting with the NPCs uh, scattered around this heart. And that is the fastest way to get pretty much get this heart done. So we can see a 4 and 1 here, if you can't see correctly. 4, 1. Option 4, option 1. That gets, the, that gets a um, heart thing done there. This is part of Augmented Terrier. This is the only thing that Augmented Terrier actually helps you heart-wise, if I recall correctly. All, the rest of Augmented Terrier doesn't help you with any other heart. It's literally just this. I don't know why Null programmed it to do just that, but that, that's a thing. <laughs> Only by wiki in it. I guess just because I'm lazy to open wiki. Ah. Memory, memory. <laughs> also, I'm failing to freaking do this easiest bloody griffin thing here. Oh, right, there we go. But yeah, that'll be the last heart. The um, one I told you guys to put X in chat. The uh, mathematical puzzles heart. That'll be the very, very last that we'll be doing in this zone. I believe the giveaway is also close. I will pick out a winner very, very soon. This will be the first winner for tonight's giveaways. There is more to come. Um, okay, I still need to kill a few more things because I'm not going to get the whole heart finished here. Um, so again, along the way, in between each NPC for this heart, try to pick up the Branberries as well. Um, shit. 3-3. Yeah, so we need to kill, um, not kill necessarily, but pick up some Branberries around the area. Alright, cool. <laughs> I think the game invalid. <laughs> It's a good thing that there are not, like, not a lot of people still at this time. Like, the last two days we were doing, like, pretty much part of the guide, we really struggled on some of the hearts because there were just, like, tons of, like, I don't know, like, new players or something just, like, around. Like, I don't really see that many people actually doing, like, Worldcom stuff, but, like, there was so many, like, new players. Like, I want to say new players. I really don't think it's people on alt accounts. Like, it, I actually feel like there was just a ton of new players when we were doing Worldcom. Like, we saw so many people since we've been doing this. Which is a nice thing. Like, th that means there's more people playing the game. That's a good thing. So, there's nothing special at this heart. Pretty much just interact with stuff. Um, beat things up. Nothing special. No little, no hot spot. Uh, there's, not, there's not really a hot spot here. Ah, shit, I got put in combat. 
I should hopefully break combat here. Yeah, I did. Okay, cool. Okay, um, this next heart has a bit of a cheat to it. There is a very, very wonderful way to do this next heart without having to, like, grind too hard for it. Yeah. So, this next heart, follow very carefully. If you're using Augmented Terrier, um, it'll pretty much guide you on how to do it. So when you do this particular heart, you can actually just spam interact on all of these control panels and it will pretty much fly you through this um, this particular area. Make sure you interact with each one though. You need to do it in an orderly fashion. There's a, there's a very, very specific method in order to interact with um, those control panels. If you skip a control panel ahead, it's not going like, to give you that zoom effect. Now you noticed every single time I got zoomed, it gave me heart progression. So you don't, you pretty much don't need to kill a single thing for this heart. So this is where it stops. When you get to about this area, this is where you need to run all the way to over here. So again, if you have Augmented Terry up and running, it'll actually guide you to where it is. And then you can start using the F2 Interact thing here again. And it'll take you from control panel to control panel. So again, we freeze here. I'm going to quickly drop off a position rewinder here because we can do that. Um, you want to come back here when you pick up the point of interest that's going into dry, um, that's going into dry top. So we're going to quickly get the POI and then we're going to pop back with our position rewinder, which will take us all the way back to where we dropped it off. So pop back now. Alright, cool. Because you need to be back over here to interact with this control panel that's coming up. So interact with this. And as you can see, we've completed this heart without killing a single thing. We're just kind of zooming around. That is top priority for that heart. Um, this particular heart, okay, this, this heart is really, really nice when you have the events up, because it just spawns a bunch of additional ads here, but as you can see, we do not have the event, so we kind of just need to kill things, bash things up. Nothing special here. I've got a little bit too far. Never mind, I didn't go too far. Feels good. <laughs> yes, it was being a cutie. For the griffin, yeah, the griffin, the griffin is a mount you get, um, it's a collection, it's actually a very, very small collection, and there is, it's about a 250 gold sink, if I recall correctly. It's not too expensive to make it, um, I do recommend that it's not a necessity for doing, like, a World Cup speedrun guide, it's definitely not a necessity, but it is very, very useful. Very, very useful if you can get um if you can get the mounts. Right. Uh, this next hut we're about to do um is really nothing special pretty much just turning so you're going to be turning into a bandit and you pretty much just beat things up again no hot spot no secret no little tricky knickknack let's just come in here um however i do prioritize I try to uh brawl with as many bandits as possible and just spam auto attack don't worry about using number two literally don't like ignore every other single skill on your bar here just spam number one. Interact with the brawler and just spam number one. Nothing special about this heart.
Um, I think we need to kill at least three more brawlers. I think it's dual three more times at least. Yeah, one more brawler. Alright, the next hut that we'll be doing has a hot spot. Um, a very, very big hot spot. And unfortunately, it is a bit RNG. If someone else is already in this camp and have cleared the ads, then it's going to be a bit of a problem. But this next hut is a very, very big hot spot. Uh, okay, so it doesn't look like anyone's actually been in here. So we get to tag every single mob in this camp. This is really, really good. We're going to pull them all to a side here, assuming I don't die. Let's rack them all up here. Yeah, pro uh, top priority, come inside this camp. Pretty much, like, pull everything. So, we're at 85% now in Brisbane Wildlands. Um, this particular hut has a small hot spot. Um, inside, over these walls, there's like a bunch of ads you can pretty much fight here. Um, never mind. Someone else is here and killing the ads, so a bit unfortunate here. So, yeah, this is one of the hearts where, it, again, it's slightly affected by RNG. RNG being if there's another player around. If there's another player around, then this becomes a little bit longer to do. Alright, it looks like some of the ads are actually spawning back up back here. That's good. Um, if by the time you've killed every single ad and you don't have and you haven't completely finished the heart, then pick up the banded documents and turn them into the heart. The heart is a little bit east of where I am right now, shown on the mini map. You can see it a little bit highlighted on the side there. Um, except I don't think we'll need to turn in anything. I think there's a plenty, there's actually enough ads for us to just get this heart done. Yeah, okay, cool. So we'll just chuck out any spare documents that you have. Don't need that in your inventory. Alright, um, we have one heart left to do, thinking. Oh, okay, I found the last point of, I, I found the last hero point I need, it's a little bit further back. Okay, um, I'm just gonna quickly get the waypoint here, hopefully it's not contested, it shouldn't be contested. Okay, it's not contested, okay. Before I do this heart, because I want to show you guys how to really, really do that as fast as possible, we're going to quickly go get the hero point. So, remember remember in part one of the speedrun guide, I said that if you buy all the central tier hero points, you will always have one hero point that you have to pretty much go find. This is that one hero point. <laughs> if you buy your, hero, your central tier um, hero points um, through the 1v1 currency, there will always be almost almost always be one um hero point that you need to go get somewhere so we're gonna quick because there's a bunch of ads in here we're just gonna quickly stealth ourselves with shadow refuge so this is the one hero point that we need to do and now we have all 189 out of 189 as you can see now all right okay now we're gonna do this side that apparently a lot of you don't like so this is going to be the fun heart for me. Again, a lot of this, a lot of what you will see in the next few seconds is memory. <laughs> for the most part. I do not have um, my guide here to help me.
Uh, gamma is greater than alpha. Uh, this is 63 by 24, I think. Yeah, 63 by 24. This is, is 54. I go to the other side. I can't remember. I can't actually remember all the ones on this side by that time. Um, I think it's 60, 656. No, I was wrong there. Unfortunate. Where is that easy one? Where is the freaking 8.4 one? Not even here. It feels bad, man. a third. Oh. Slightly unfortunate on these. The other side should be spawning up very soon. Hopefully soon. Yeah, these nodes are already back up. They're generally almost always the same. Don't, th sorry. They're not always the same, but a lot of the time they are. If it's like the first time that you've done it, a lot of them are always the same. I just one. All right, now we're done. Yeah. All right. Um. All right. I'll pick out the winner as well now, since we're just about to have this map finished. All right. So the first winner of a stack of actos goes to Ari Boz. <laughs> You are the winner of my first giveaway for tonight. Please speak up and chat with your cat name or its two name. I thought I jumped down here before, but I guess I didn't. Nice, we got a key. Alright, we're gonna do Kessick Hills next. Alright. I'll complete that. I will send your stack of vectors in a moment, Ari. We're going to open up with another stack of vectors for the second giveaway for tonight. Goodbye, Ariana. Enjoy. Right, there you go, Ariana. Enjoy the stack of vectors, whatever you may do with it. But it feels good. Alright, so we got that map done pretty quick. So we have three maps left. Kessex Hills, Gandaran Fields, and then... Uh, Arathi Hinterlands. Um... I can't actually remember if there are any hot spots in this map. I can't remember if there's any hot spots in this map. Or any of the hearts. Like, the, the hearts are very, very straightforward. Like, there's no, like little shortcut here and there to like do something really quick. It, I'm, I'm trying to remember every single heart here right now. <laughs> Alright, cool. Easy heart done. Of course, like... For the hearts that I don't really say much on about, what you should be doing is just watching how I do the heart. A lot of the hearts are very, very straightforward. Like, there's nothing special on how to do some of the hearts. But watch the way that I do the hearts, because that's probably going to be, like, it, like that's the best thing you can probably do. Some of the hearts where I fell into contribute information, like, if there is, like, a particular heart where I say, okay, make sure you come over here and kill these things, those are the ones that have, like, the little, like, trick spots. Um, to them, but not every single heart has that. Just remember that. Not every single heart has like a little hot spot or something. Um, although some hearts do have priorities. So priority for this heart, as you can see what I'm doing right now, is killing the um, scales. B, down to the water level. You don't really need to buy anywhere higher than this. I should be in heart range. Yeah, cool. Oh, I am. Should die though. So yeah. 
Kessex Hills, Gendaran Fields, and then Harathi Hinterlands. Other Harathi Hinterlands, um, maybe I'll go to some like Wolfy World Roaming or something for a bit or some PvP. Actually, um, there is a little trick, actually, now that I just remembered. There is a little trick to... Okay, so there's a heart in this map that pretty much requires you... It, it's around a bunch of trolls. Actually, it's right here. It's actually right here. Um, this particular heart has a small trick to it regarding um, some bombs that I'll show you guys how to do. So... What, what I think most people do for that heart I'm going to be doing uh, very, very soon is just kill Etans. They normally just kill Etans or feed the, um, uh, put like bait on the uh, rabbit traps or something. Now, there is a, in my opinion, there is a better way to do it that I think a lot of people may, may or may not know. Um, and I'll show you guys in a little bit because we're going to, we are going to be doing that heart very, very soon. Yeah, thanks for the follow, by the way. Okay, now that we're at this hut. So, normally you can interact with some of these ra rabbit baits. Your option is to also kill Etans, but remember, Etans actually have, like, a fair amount of HP pool, so they are tend to be... They are generally annoying to fight, because they're very, very tough. Now, what I normally do is... You can pick up bombs. There are multiple bombs. Oh, wait, never mind. The event is actually up here. We're going to quickly leech this, because this is already at 50%. We're going to let that guy do the rest of the work now. Uh, never mind, we're just going to perma CC it instead. Okay, when the event is not up, there are some explosives around the area, as you can see. So, stolen, unstable, explosive. Pick up an explosive and hug one of these things. Just go right up to it and drop the bomb. Go up, right up to it, and, tr uh, and drop a bomb on it. Now, some of them, unfortunately, won't work like that one just did. We didn't get any heart progress for that one. Um... Pretty much prioritize picking up these bombs and dropping them just under the caves. You need to be, you need to pretty much like be in here really, really tight. And it should get, it should contribute as heart progress when they explode. So yeah, so it did for that one. This, in my opinion, I think is the easiest way to do this heart. And you can do this multiple times. Just pick up a bomb, drop it. There are lots of bombs around this area that you can pretty much pick up. Um, some of the, some of the caves don't exactly work if you put the bomb next to it. But most of them, yeah, so that one doesn't count. I'm hoping this one does. Uh, do you main thief? No, I do not main thief. I do not main thief. I main revenants. Thief is like a good, a close second though right now. I think dropping a bomb on this side also counts as high progression. I'll just test that real quick. Yes, it does. Feels good. So we have to drop one more. Actually, don't even need to do it. Just trigger with the rabbit. Rabbit bait point. And go easy. We can be on our way now. Alright, hot spot in the water here. Um, don't worry about... Okay, so for this heart, there is a bunch of fish. There are, is a There is a crap ton of fish in the water. And they actually aggro at a fairly large range as well. Like, literally almost maximum range of shooting point. Um, and you can interact, you can pretty much trigger every single fish here. Um, this is probably a hot spot. Actually, this is, yeah, this is the only hot spot for this particular heart. Although, you do need to be a bit careful because if you drag too many, you will end up just dying. Like, they do inflict a decent amount of condition damage on you. Um, but for doing this heart, stay in the water. Stay in the water, kill the fish inside. Barracudas, sharks, whatever it is. 
don't worry about going um, on land because there is an option where you can like do stuff um, up there when you're on land, but d don't worry about that. Just prioritize coming inside the water and do all this stuff here. This is a lot easier to do. What build is this? You can do exclamation mark build or exclamation mark builds. One of the two should work. Um, and that'll show you the um, the very, very last comments is the build that I'm currently running right now. And that's the build that you guys can run. Like, in my opinion, I believe that is the... That, that, that's the best build to run for Thief, for like, World Complete. You want to run as much mobility as possible. And as much strength as possible. So, obviously, full Berserker, Scholar Runes, it's not a surprise there. Alright, um, this... Uh, okay, so we do actually have the event up, which is a bit convenient. So, this pretty much spawns a bunch of centaurs, um, in this area. Um, if you can, try to interact with the rabbits. There are some rabbits scattered around in the, um, fields. The little mini farms. Um, are there any centaurs down here? Doesn't look like there is. Okay. So yeah, if this event is up, um, definitely try to prioritize killing the minotaurs here. Because they come in waves. Yeah, this is superior to PP Thief, did I? I mean, okay, so I know some people actually have asked me, like, why don't you run, like, Pistol Pistol freaking Dead Eye or something? Because you can burst really, really powerful with, like, our Pistol Unload. Okay, now the downside to Pistol is that it has no cleave. There is no cleave on Pistol. It's really, really powerful single target pressure, but there's no cleave on it. And you can't justify Short Bow as a form to, like, cleave things out. Staff is just so much better for damage. Um, in comparison to, like... Short bow for cleaving. Um, wait, what the heck? How did I miss that point of interest? But yeah, no, I I have run maybe one world comp on Pistol Pistol Dead Eye. Um, and I didn't do it as quick as I feel like I should have. Like, I don't, I don't think it's, like, that super amazing. Okay, um, this heart, Seraph has captured Earthworks, and I think they've captured this. Is this ours? This looks like it's ours. Yeah, this is ours. Okay, um. Ugh, okay, this is a bit of a painful heart if two major events are not up. If both events are not up, this is a slightly painful heart to do. Probably the most painful one in this map. Um, I'm going to go check in a second if an, if the event is up. I don't think it is. Usually it isn't. Usually there's an event over here that also spawns, but it looks like it's not up either. Yeah, okay. So we need to do this the old school way, which is pretty much run around this area and just kill stuff. Like, interact with spike traps, interact with, um, and uh, kill to mini warriors. There is two events that spawn in this area that make this heart so much easier. Um, and I definitely recommend those are top priority. There's an event that spawns inside that big camp in the distance over here. Like this huge camp there. Um, I'll show you guys on the map in a second. What's the difference between your route UI and Taco? The, the biggest difference is the fact that these routes on Augmented Terrier are much more efficient than Taco. There is no way I would have pulled an 11 hours and 39 minute run using Taco markers. Like, I would have pulled maybe 13, 14, maybe, like, maybe longer than that. It, it, these, the routes on Augment, the, the routes that the person made for Augmented Terry are just, like, that much better. You new to the game? No problem, Terry. Wait, is your name? Oh, Trier. Trier. I called you Terry for a second, Terry. Yeah, no, that's fine. New players are welcome here. Yeah. Got to ask questions. But yeah, again, because we don't have, like, either event spawn, this heart takes a while to do. And there are people around as well, which make it a little bit more tricky. Um, really hoping something starts spawning soon. I 
So just to clear, I can barely remember the old Kessa kills. Feels weird, man. I mean, me too, actually. I, I can barely remember it as well. Actually, there's a couple of sentinels on this side. There is a couple of sentinels on this side, but they might not be up. Actually, wait, they, they are up. Okay, that's, that, that's convenient. Um, when I finish this hut, I'll show you guys exactly where the two, um, the two events should be. We're, we're actually really, really close to breaking heart range here, so we don't want to do that. Try to tag as many things as possible, but make sure that you're still within, within heart range. If you're outside heart range, then that's going to just, like, fuck you a little bit. This should be the last kill here. Okay, cool. That's the last kill. Okay, so for this particular hut that we just did here, there is two priority events. One spawns here which is pretty much a bunch of centaur waves, and it's very, very, very good to do for the event. The other event spawns here, which is basically defending the waypoint. These are the two main points um, to do this hard as fast as possible. They are both worth doing. Just, like, check if this one's up, if this one's not up, go check if the one up here is up. If, they, if n none of them are up, which you guys just witnessed, then you have to do this the old school way. Works of being a streamer, explaining things over and over. I mean, I'm not fussed. <laughs> I'm, I'm fine to do that. It might be, a, it might sound like a broken record for some of you guys, but <laughs> that's okay. Ah, uh, yikes! I missed that. Oh no! Did I get stuck? Oh, what? No way! Are you kidding me? Did I really get stuck? I got freaking, there's an invisible wall. I went over the invisible wall. I somehow broke the map. Oh my god. I think I roll a beetle too quick. I got the waypoint back now. Feels bad, man. So at the end of this map, um, I will do a slash age, and I'll pull up the world comp percentage to see where we're at. But yeah, the point of this is to do it like as fast as possible but also explain along the way, at least the hearts that I feel that are worth explaining, um, how to do them as fast as you can. Because as you've seen already in the first three parts of the speedrun guide, there are a few hearts where you can get them done in literally like less than a minute because of a specific method, a specific hotspot, a specific tool to be handing in. So for this next hut that we'll be doing, there is actually a... This is a hut you can turn in. It requires 25? 25 or 30? 20. It's actually 20. 20 Seraph badges. This hut that we'll be doing here in a second is something you can buy on the trading post and immediately complete with a certain quantity. 20. So, this is the guy... So we currently have zero progress. This is where you need to buy 20 Seraph badges. It's really cheap. It's not that expensive. Immediately complete the heart. Be on your way. Pay to win heart. Exactly. And these are the best hearts. <laughs> That's speed. I really wish there were more hearts in Central Tier that you could do that with. But there's not. There is a total of 13 Central Tier hearts that are basically pay to win. Only 13. It's not a lot. Are you using your map guides themselves or your tech guide? I'm not using tech guide. No, this, this, is, this is Nulls. This is Nulls. This is the one I always use. I'm not using tech guides. Tech guides also, tech guides done on Taco as well. This is not Taco. Alright, um, there is a slight priority for this heart, 
Um, and that there's an event inside this camp here, but it doesn't look like it's up, so we're not going to worry about it. Um, we need to get a water bucket. Pick up a water bucket. Drop the water bucket on some of these fires here. Um, to avoid eating the knockback mechanic on some of these exploded shots, because if you generally let the full channel on the unexploded shots um, occur, they will knock you back. There's a good chance they'll knock you back. So to avoid that, press F once and quickly weapon swap. Because you still get progress for the hearts and you don't channel the full animation for the actual bombs to knock you back. Some of those bombs knock you back. Is it public? Yes, it's public. Do exclamation mark routes. Exclamation mark routes. And everyone everyone can see like the like the routes I'm using, you can download it as well. This is more designed again, just to re-clarify. Um again, like this is more designed for speedrunners. Like it's not as end user friendly as like taco markers are. Like like Tekkets taco markers, they're a lot more easier to understand than what I'm currently using. But the routes on his thing are not that efficient, in my opinion. Like, the, 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 his routes are basically, if you want to, like, just do a relaxing run. Like, if you don't want to super try hard something, um, then, like, use this. Like, if you want it relaxing, not too stressful, be almost, like, sp almost spoon-fed. <laughs> almost spoon-fed information on how to do World Complete. Taka was the one to use. Give yourself stability if you can. You can do that as well, yeah. Like, just give yourself stability if you can, but not every single. Like, I don't think I'll ever be doing world comp on a Guardian. That's just too slow for me. Last time I did world comp on a Guardian was almost freaking years ago for me. Also, for anyone new to the stream, there is a current giveaway up and running for a stack of Ectos. It'll be closed kind of soon, I think. Actually, it's closed now. It's actually closed now. I didn't even realize it. Oh, it just it just closed right now. Okay, cool. All right, I'll pick out a winner for that uh, soon. Soon enough. Okay, this heart down here. This is another heart that's pretty much pay to win. You need to buy 34 crabs of meat from the trading post. So again, this thing right here. 34 crab meats. Very, very cheap stuff again. Talk to the hard NPC, turn it in, you get this hard done immediately. Did wall completion on Necro with 25% speed, Signet before PLF. Oh my god, doing wall comp on Necro! Oh man. The two worst classes to do wall comp on, in my opinion, are Necro and freaking Elementalist. Like, maybe possibly Warrior too. <laughs> my first completion was on Core Stuff Elias Free to Play. Oh my god. Monka Sweat. I did Map Comp on Necro twice. Well, you're a Necro main linker. You love Necro, so I can see you doing that. <laughs> Why well, didn't Mammy whisper me Katoffel? Freaking monkey. I'm doing map comp on my necro as we speak. <laughs> Kick you image. Oh boy. Yeah, no, I don't think I'll ever do world comp on anything but a thief. <laughs> thief is just way, way too fast. Like, it's got the damage, it has the combat mobility. Like, Mesmer, Mesmer, in my opinion, is definitely second best. Definitely second best for doing ward comp. Because it's got, like, really, really distant um, AoE pressure, because Greatsword. And Focus, like, Focus 5, the Phantasm, literally hits, like, multiple targets without having to target any... Or, you have to target one thing, but the Focus 5 um, attacks hit multiple things. So, it's, like, really, really nice distant AoE damage, in a way. But, um, Greatsword is really Omega damage as well on Mesma.
I do map comp on on everything but thief. Oh, screw you, Jess. You make me sick. <laughs> it's almost one shots everything. DH can be fast too. DH can be fast, yes. Like it definitely has the power pressure because you know longbow. Like longbow was nice because longbow actually pierces new like near nearby targets um, with the auto attack. The downside to DH is while I think it has more power than Thief, like it can definitely definitely has the potential to one shot things. It doesn't it doesn't have the combat mobility. Like most you have is like Sword 2, DA um uh, Leap of Faith, the um, F2 heal, Judge's intervention if you happen to run that. Um but it doesn't have like it, and they're on fairly long cooldowns as well as the other thing. Like, it definitely has the power to, I think, make up part of it, but it doesn't have a lot of in-combat mobility. And you'd need to be running, like, either, like, superior sigil of speed or speed runes, because you don't have passive sw you don't have passive speed. What's the best music for map comp? What's best music for map comp? Whatever you like. <laughs> like, if I could listen to my freaking trap, rap, and EDM remix, I would, but I have- I literally had to make a specific playlist. Um, I had to make a specific music playlist just so, like, Twitch wouldn't, like, mute my video for, like, copyright stuff. So I, like, pretty much just got a bunch of copyright mu- um, no copyright music. Um... So Twitch wouldn't mute the video, so you guys can actually listen to every single bit of information I had to give. Because if I got cut out, literally right before I was going to explain about a heart, because I was running um, copyright music or something, then you guys just literally lost that like that entire heart worth of information. So I pretty much went to go make a, a unique playlist. Um, uh, that's two veterans there. I'm actually gonna yeet. I'm gonna try and yoink that. I yoink this guy's truffle. Wait, did, did I not take the truffle? Tim Sells, good morning. Yeah, what's up, Shari? I'm a, how are you, man? I kind of like. Actually, no. I, I don't. I don't want to be attacking this. I also don't want to aggro that either. What is best real life food for map cop? <laughs> um I don't know. Pizza? Pizza is pretty nice. There's never there's never not a bad time for pizza. Um Sim Cells, if you drop a precursor like I did, I dropped spark, is it more proper to sell it for gold or make it and sell the legendary at the end? I mean it's more it, it's always profitable to make your own legendary marginally um but you need to account all the other resources you'd be putting in for that legendary as well like if you picked up a spark that's automatically 300 something gold for you whatever the trading post price is um if you happen to turn into a legendary using a bunch of other materials i mean you just make yourself like a tiny bit more gold but your expenses also rise as well because you're making a legendary weapon Bacon, avo, feta pizza. Oof. That sounds good. Apple strudel, best food. I don't think I've ever had apple strudel in my life. But I'm willing to try it. Greasy piece of fingers on the keyboard. <laughs> just use gloves. And just take off your gloves when you actually have to play the game. App comp, people. Right? What's up, Tercy? How are you, man? Yeah, I'm actually surprised. Like, so far, because we've, we've done... We're literally on part four of part five of the speedrun guide. It's actually been pretty successful. 
Like it's it honestly has been pretty successful. Like, because when when I was first considering doing this on stream, like you know what, this is probably not like going to be good. I don't think a lot of people will like it. And like here I am with like almost literally 100 viewers. Um, also trying to keep it enticing with like giveaways and stuff at the same time. But like I don't know, I, I, I it was really a it was a really really good turnout. Lots of people, I guess, enjoy speedruns. Seeing someone who can do this in like sub 15 hours. By the way, um, I actually think I will get this done about like underneath 15 hours. I definitely think I will get this done about under 15 hours. Okay, so for this heart, you have um, two options. Um, the event actually isn't up for this, but that's okay. Pineapple pizza with fork and knife, yikes. Okay, put an X in chat if you enjoy pineapple and pizza. All right, Tosi, get out, please. Oh my God, are you guys kidding me? <laughs> Wait, really? You guys actually like pineapple on pizza? Vodka is? That's a lot of people. That's way more than I anticipated. Holy crap, I'm way outnumbered. Tosi has been timed out. No, don't, don't, don't time out Tosi. <laughs> Literally one of the mods. I, I imagine that was a Yasaville. I think of Yasaville just freaking temporary, <laughs> temporarily bad Tussie. <laughs> oh man, Yasaville going mad with power. Paperheads bullied. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna lie. I've had it maybe like once, but I didn't really like it. Almost done with Kessex Hills here, boys. I like pineapples. Pineapples are good. Speaking of which, Yasaville, I recommend you eat more pineapples as well. Eat per giggle. <laughs> oh my god, I missed my freaking turn. Alright, cool, easy, get six heals done. Alright, uh, two maps left. Okay, so I want to show you guys character progression. Uh, I'm in a second here. It really depends if it's added before or post baking, then it doesn't get soggy. I agree with you there. I agree with you there, Skangle. Shit. Imagine getting dismounted for freaking Mystic Forge. Alrighty. Um, so we have two maps left for part four of the speedrun guide. Um, let me pick out a winner first, real quick here. So this will be the second giveaway of tonight. Wow, QQ image. You have been on a roll for like the last three weeks. <laughs> you are the winner of a stack of Ectos. Please speak up and chat with your account name or a two name to receive the reward. I will open up the third giveaway a um, tiny bit later, tiny bit later on the guide. QQ image literally has the luck of like Luffy. When Luffy was like first coming into my streams, Luffy was like freaking winning like majority of the giveaways. I'm like, what? Why does it keep picking his name? Well, time to make a grilled cheese sandwich. What's up, Cyprian? How are you, man? He should go to, he should go do Pachoya Pinata. <laughs> Definitely should. 
Oh yeah, right. I was gonna show you guys character progression. Um, okay. So let me just quickly wait. What the heck? Why did I copy paste that? That's better. Right. There you go, Kiki image. Enjoy. All right. So we're gonna do a quick slash age. Uh, for you guys. One second. Just need to get rid of my check over. Alrighty. So we are currently 76% on world complete. And we are 10 hours and 13 minutes over the last three days. 10 minutes, 13 hours over the last three days, and we are currently 76 world complete. We are three fourths done. That's pretty good time. Pretty good time there. So, again, um, as kind of anticipated because I, get, I am trying to explain things as I go, um, I definitely think we'll get it in less than 15 hours. I definitely do think we'll get it, le we'll get it um, in done less than 15 hours. Maybe for lucky, maybe 14 hours as well, but we'll see. You want to break world comp? No, 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 no. <laughs> that is not the point of this. The point of this is a guide. Um, I won't be, I won't be aiming to break my own record. <laughs> If I am going to try and beat my own record, I will be doing it off stream. And pretty much like super actually concentrated on everything I do. Like unfortunately, part of having a really, really good world comp, uh, world comp run is actually RNG on advance. Like RNG is a huge factor on how fast you can get your world comp done because it's reliable to do some specific hearts. Some hearts you can get done in literally a matter of seconds because of a particular event that spawns nearby. But you know, um, no, if I ever try to beat my own freaking world record, it's going to be like months from now. I, I'm, I'm literally burnt out from doing my previous world record run. I don't even think I can beat my own time, to be honest. I had one run, like the one run I have posted on speedrun.com um, is the current world record of 11 hours and 43 minutes. And then a month later, I did a off-the-record world comp run, and I got 11 hours and 39 minutes. I beat my own time by 4 minutes. Now, if you take into account all of world comp, beating one owns time by 4 minutes is not a huge thing. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I'm not aiming to beat my own record run. As much as I would love to do it on stream for you guys, I don't think I can do that. Not like, I, <laughs> not when I'm explaining a bunch of things. <laughs> okay. Um. Sometimes for this particular event, um, an event spawns nearby, and it's pretty much like a, like waves and waves of pirates. Um, if the event is not up, you pretty much do the steel score way, which is just interact with bushes, interact with pirate traps, miss spots. Um, bunch of interactables inside the house that you should prioritize to get, which is just the miss spots and the, the traps. By the way, when you podcast, what are those green lines? These green lines, so if you do exclamation mark routes, you can see what these green lines are. The green lines is a um, overlay called Augmented Terria, which I'm using as the framework of the speedrun guide I'm making for you guys on stream. Ditch Yasserville? Feels bad. Wait, who is she ditching? I said I want to get some food and you did stuff for- Oh, okay. Oh, it's the wrong thing. Okay, okay.
Um, this heart, try to pro Okay, so this heart, you need to actually kill some Etons, because you cannot really do this heart without killing some Etons. But also activate every single Frost Trap you can. It's a pretty nice contribution towards the heart progress. Try not to aggro this big guy, though. You don't really want to Okay, I aggro it, but we're not, we're not going to fight that. We're going to really run away. This thing takes forever to kill. Veteran Etons literally take, like, forever to kill. <laughs> So many frost traps of soul beast switch. <laughs> God damn, Jess. So many frost traps. Feels soul beast, man. Is that guy killing that Etten? No, never mind. He's an NPC killing that. Alright. Um, hopefully this Etten will be the last contribution to the heart. Up. Oh, okay. Quickly res this. Yeah, we'll res this thing real quick. Okay, um, the next heart, sorry, not the next heart, the heart after the next one. Okay, so there's a heart a little bit north of this, um, which, um, I'll explain, actually, I'll explain it when I get there. I'll explain it when I get Um, so just to explain what I'm currently doing right now on this particular heart, there is a hotspot for this heart, and that's pretty much come inside these, uh, these tunnels. There is a bunch of dredge you can pretty much pull aggro on, cleave them all out. Um, this is the only hotspot for this heart, if I recall correctly, so try to prioritize coming in here. You need to go pretty far inside this cave, um, to get to that hotspot, but it's worth doing. It's worth doing. Okay, now this is the heart I was talking about. Okay, so yesterday I said that some of the hearts don't actually have a factor on how much extra contribution you do based on difficulty. So I actually did a little bit of research. Apparently the hard one actually contributes a tiny bit more um, heart progress than the easy one. However, it takes longer to do. Um, it takes a little bit longer to do. A tiny bit longer to do it. And again, because it always spawns a veteran fire harpy, it's a bit risky. So I recommend just pretty much always just pop in and do the easy one. Pop in and do the easy one because you pretty much go in and out. The difference is, at least according to the wiki, it's 6% of the difference. Um, it's up to you. It's really, really up to you. If you're like running like Mesmer or something where you can pretty much camp range, then you can probably do the hard one. But because I am playing Thief and I do have to do melee attacks, I can't exactly spam a bunch of melee attacks on the Fire Harpy. So I'll show, I'll do the hard one again just to show you guys. A Fire Harpy, Fire Ember, sorry. Fire Ember, um, will always spawn on the hard difficulty. Um, now unless you can camp range, you pretty much don't get ticked by the, uh, the Fire Shield. Which, by the way, does a lot of freaking damage if you have constant burning on you. Um, the heart progress is based on the it is based on the spawn if it's a veteran or a normal ad. Look, open world difficulty settings. <laughs> open world difficulty settings. Imagine that. 
Okay, um, when I finish this map, I'll open up the third giveaway for the night. So, we're already halfway there. I hope the elite is not up. Okay, cool, the elite is not up here. This is very good. I'll turn to giveaway. Uh, the giveaway will be open. So you, you, you typed the command correctly. It is exclamation mark rigged, but the giveaway is not open just yet. It will be opened up a little bit later. It'll be the third giveaway for tonight as well. Will be a third stack of vectors. Um. Yikes, I need to get these skills. Tag these for credit real quick. Like, I think one of the nicest things about doing world comp is that you actually get, like, a full scale. Like, you, you literally explore just about every single part of Central Terria. Like, there's so much nice scenery as well. Like, uh, it's always nice to see it once in a while. Okay, um, this hut has a small hotspot. It is pretty much exactly where I am. Just aggro a bunch of the pirates here and just cleave them all out. It is a very, very fast hot to do. It's pretty much just kill pirates. Attack these. Um. I, I can leave. I don't need to be here anymore. Whisper drinking game? What's whisper drinking game? How many times have you completed the map? Um, you mean how many times have I done world comp? I've done world comp about 73 times. 73, 74. Kind of lost count. The world record was the world record was done on the 65th, 65th or 66th. Walks twice. Hello, sir. Can you tell me how much of map completion do you have? At the moment, I have done 78%. 78%. This will be finished by tomorrow. Like, we'll, 
Like, ideally, like, assuming everything goes according to plan regarding my timing and everything, this will be finished. The The entire speedrun guide will be finished by, t like, the, at the end of tomorrow's stream. Hello, Jazik. Welcome to the stream. Okay. Um, next heart doesn't have a hotspot. It has priority. Um, this is where interacting and weapon swapping comes really, really handy. So again, just for some of you guys that are like new, new here, one thing you can do for a lot of central tier is interact with something and quickly weapon swap to get credit. So I'm going to interact with this real quick and weapon swap so we don't do the full animation. So you just saw we got part of the heart progression and we pretty much canceled the animation. So we don't get like stuck trying to uncover these things. It's a big thing to do when you do world comp is like, whoops, I pressed five on the wrong thing, on the wrong weapon set. But yeah, um, of, of course you can't do that little trick if your weapon swap is on cooldown. So try to do that when you're out of combat. Don't do it when you're in combat. So again, I'm gonna press F, weapon swap, press F, weapon swap, press F, weapon swap. Now we're in combat, so we actually have a 10 second cooldown on our weapon swapping. But that is a very, very fast way to process interactables without waiting for the full channel. Yeah, I saw you enter the giveaway. I saw you enter the giveaway, Jazzik. I just noticed you didn't say anything else other than enter the giveaway. <laughs> Which is perfectly fine. Oh, shit. Hello, Joe's nineteen ninety. How are you? At the end of the next map we do, because it'll be the last part that the... Okay, so Gandara Fields will be the last map for the part four guide. Um, so ideally after that, um, I'll probably go just stream some other stuff. So either some 1v World or some PvP. I might do some PvP actually. Just do some... Chill on rank stuff. Okay, the next hut we'll be doing has a hot spot. There is a there, there is a hot spot for the next hut that we'll be doing. Uh, I'm hoping I can get there in time before someone else cleaves all the ads. There is a nice hot spot for this hut right here. Um, the event also seems to be up, which is kind of favorable. Okay, here's the hotspot. Hotspot is literally the pool of these ads. Literally tag every single thing and just kill it all. That is top priority for this heart. Make sure you do this, you make sure you kill all those ad first before you do anything else, and then you can jump inside here, kill the rot dogs, destroy the full food balls. Yeah, so... Pretty much got this hot done in less than about 30 seconds though. Because we had a lovely hot spot that no one touched. So remember that. Remember that spot. Bunch of centaurs you can go kill and clave. It's always like playing some Morby Ward and chill. How are you? I'm pretty good. Pretty good. We actually had a pretty prom promising um, speedrun guide today. Like a lot, of, some of the events I was hoping were up actually were up. Um, okay, there's someone else in this area. Which is a bit of, okay, it looks like they're leaving. I think they're leaving. Yeah, it looks like they're leaving. Okay, cool. Um, this is a slightly tedious heart if the MP if the um event isn't up. 
So I'm always going to recommend pick up three of the medical supplies that are located in two different areas. There's some medical supplies found here around this part of the map and there's some medical supplies on the other side of the map as well uh, for this heart. Um, now because the event isn't up, our uh, priority is pretty much killing Skelk Scavengers and raising Seraph Archers and then patching them with the medical supplies. Now you need to give them a second after raising them um, to actually patch them. If you immediately try to, if you immediately interact with them to try and uh, patch them. So I want to show you guys real quick here. So w after we pretty much raise them, we're going to immediately click on him. If you don't give the NPC a second, you won't be able to talk to him. So see right now he says, I don't have time. We don't have the option to patch him. You need to give it a second so you can actually get this, so you can get this option saying, hold still. This might, this might, um, this might smart a bit, but it will get you moving. Why on earth does it say this might smart a bit? That doesn't make any sense. Unless I'm not understanding something there. So yeah, when you after you raise these NPCs, give it like a second before you talk to it. Otherwise, it's not going to give you the prompt message that you can raise it. How do you get ascending gear in Movie World? Um, loot boxes. <laughs> um, every time you level up in Movie World, your Movie World rank, you have a small chance of getting the ascender box upon leveling up in Movie World rank. The alternative is you can actually get it as a lucky drop of killing players. You can sometimes literally loot an Ascendant box of killing players. Do you really not know? No, I do not. I did not understand that, Kuga, but thank you for pointing that out now. I assume, like, when I first read that line, I just put in my head, hurt, instead of smart. That's why it confused me for a second. Like, I assumed it meant hurt or something, because that would be the only word that made sense. When I saw smart, I'm like, wait, what? Why? But yeah, no, Australians are behind, man. Like, we're mentally disadvantaged compared to the rest of the world. <laughs> People are. <laughs> Forgive me. All right, cool, we're done here. What ping you are on EU? Um, so being a being an Australian, currently playing on the EU servers, I average about 330 ping. All right, I'll see you around, Jezik. Thanks for dropping by. Third world country, people are giggle. Come on, it's not a third world country. The internet might be kind of third world, but like, it's honestly not that bad. Okay, uh, this particular heart. Activate all of the brawlers. Talk to every single brawler. Just have them all racked up in the middle here and then just cleave them all out. That is the fastest way to do this heart. Of course, when they actually interact back and like go actually fight you instead of just being AFK. Like what Yasuf likes to do in Mistlock Sanctuary. And then we get someone else freaking yoinking our ads, but that's okay, it's whatever. Is that Mr. Bard in the chat? What's up, man? Why are half these assholes actually spawning? But yeah, just keep doing this. Literally just keep doing this until they all, like, let the fight you. Alright, cool. Get this out of the way. If I else, as if I do something else in the game. Oh man, I guess I will.
I mean, you do. You do fractals and you do strike missions. Oh, really? I didn't make that jump? Feels bad. And you also do raids now, so... Raid Yasaville is your new nickname. Yeah, that's true. You are a wonderful support player. I won't lie. Yeah, the um the fires in Australia actually like burned away. So as I'm sure a lot of you guys heard, like pretty much from like August last year to December slash early January, there were some Omega bushfires happening uh here in the land down under. Um Huge, what, like talking some of like literally some of the worst bushfires we've ever had. And I, the downside was like, okay, so I live about three hours, three hours away from where all the like major bushfires were happening. And I can see the freak, I can smell the freaking ash from where I live. And like, I am so far away from all that, but I can literally smell it and I can see it in my air. And I, and I live in the city. I, I live in the freaking city. And it's it was really, really bad. Like, I've never seen anything as bad. Um, like, w we have, like, lots of bushfire seasons in Australia, but never, ever that bad. Thankfully, a lot of it died out, though. Like, it is a lot more calm now. Um, a lot of it started disappearing around, yeah, like, early January, late December. A lot of the bushfires actually started, like, chilling down, not freaking causing havoc. But no, like, wake, waking up almost every morning for, like, a good month or two, smelling ash, was concerning. <laughs> and there, there would be some days where, like, it would, like, literally, vision would be freaking, like, hard to see anything because of all the ash in the way. It was disgusting. Really, really bad weather. And it's unhealthy, because you don't want to breathe in freaking ash. Like, it's unhealthy to breathe in that kind of stuff. Oh my god, is there centaurs nearby? Oh, yikes. Okay, um, if centaurs start spawning around this camp area, the NPCs will pretty much ignore you and go straight to trying to kill them. Thankfully, though, like, we already did most of the heart here, so it's, not, so it's fine. Which city do you live in? I live in Sydney. New South Wales. Smokers didn't have to buy cigars for a month, I guess. <laughs> oh boy, Saria. Carbon oh, monoxide, punk ass. Yep. It was not a good month. Good few months, should I clarify. Oh, I might put the spot guy in combat, that's okay, it's fine. Same Sydney? Pog, fellow Sydney lad. How do you change mounts so fast? Um, well, I do have, like, hotkeys. Even though I don't really, like, hotkey too often. <laughs> you actually see me, like, manually pull up the freaking mount tab. But I do have hotkeys, like, set for some of them. Hotkeys are very, very useful. And I should actually use them more. Okay, um, this hut. There is a hot spot inside. Right over here. This is the only decent hot spot in here, but there's a bunch of stuff you can pretty much cleave out.
Do you know Darren Levy's YouTube channel? Darren Levy. I do not. Uh, how much build theory crafting has got into world comp speedrunning? Um, not a lot. Not a lot. On, on, honestly, not that much. Like, I kind of just put together what I thought was... Okay. Mobility. Ports. A decent break stun. Anything to give endurance. Strength. Critical hits. Passives. <laughs> Like, you should not run trickery. You want to run pretty much like full damage traits. So, no trickery, no shadow arts, um, no acrobatics. Like, just everything that pretty much gives raw power. Oh, shit. I put back it up. Broken you. Okay, I actually broken you. Broken you is Aussies, right? Is broken you Aussie? I thought I actually heard that he was an Aussie. What about sigils? Since you play around with stacking ones. Um. Okay. So stacking ones are uh, they're kind of nice, but I think more like um fire. Something that's like extra hits. So like lightning. Uh, sigil of air. Sigil of fire. I think these are a little bit better. Um, of course, like, Sigil of Night as well, since some of the maps are actually, like, done at night time as well. Um, actually, you can kind of manipulate that. If you do World Comp at a certain time, and you don't do it, like, just in off hours or something, you can probably have, like, Sigil of, Sigil of Day or Sigil of Night as well. Because that is a nice bonus to have. The Tassport run is prepped with new gear at every level, Poggies. <laughs> Um, is this the last map? This is the last map. Okay. Um, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put up the next giveaway, real quick, yeah. So this will be the third giveaway for tonight, and there'll be a stack of Ectos now. Now he just got some funny Uber videos from what Melbourne just wanted since he was playing. Then that he's from Sydney. Ah, oh, yeah. I figured that the person that you asked was also, like, a fellow Australian. <laughs> to be honest, like, it actually kind of sounds Australian, that, that, that name. Um, someone opened up a bunch of cages and didn't kill their ads. I want to take this. That's some easy loot there. Okay, um, top priority for this hut is interact with the crab traps first, and then go interact with the barrels. There are a couple barrels behind me that have leaks. That is the second priority for this hut. But yeah, someone like came here and pretty much didn't kill their crabs. So this is actually a bit of a bonus for us because crabs contribute to the heart progress here. And when we kill them, we can spawn them again with the crab trap. So whoever left us a little Christmas present here, yeah, thank you. Alright, should we just plug in a couple barrels here and should be done? Alright, cool. Yeah, it can be out of here. Oh, no, really? Okay, I need to go back. I got stuck in a rock, apparently. Guild Wars 2 said no. Zoom, zoom, bunny up.
Ah, uh, yikes. Um, I'm thinking, do I want to do, actually, you know what, I'm gonna, I'll open up a Twitch ball for that instead, a little bit later. I'm thinking because I'm, I'm actually considering, do I want to do extra maps? Because I actually think I might have some free time. Um, wait, hold on, Yasevil, are you busy? <laughs> I guess I'll ask her first. I'm thinking maybe I'll do extra maps because I actually, I, uh, normally I close my stream off in about half an hour from now, half an hour to an hour. So I might, I actually have some time to do some extra maps, but um, hmm, what? Are you busy, babe? Like, are you free kind of soon, maybe? Or are you doing other stuff? If you're doing other stuff, don't worry. I was gonna let, let you guys pick, like, if, I, cause technically th this is the last map I need to do. This is the last part I need to do for our for um, part part four of the speedrun guide, we will pretty much have world comp done tomorrow. So on tomorrow's stream, part five, which will be um, Steam Spur Mountains along with the Orion maps, that'll be part five, and that'll pretty much finish off the uh, speedrun guide. Uh, not really. Do your stuff. I'll think about it. The thing is because if I do if I do two or one of the maps right after I do this map, it's gonna cut into the next part. I don't see. And how long complete world? Um so we are definitely going to have world comp done in less than 15 hours i got no idea how long i will actually take from here and now we are currently 80 percent on the world complete and i'm just doing a quick slash age just to see how, how old this character is we are 10 hours and 52 minutes 10 hours and 52 minutes and we are currently 80 percent of the world complete so i would say like definitely less than 15 hours maybe 13? 14? I want to say, just to be safe, maybe 14 hours I think we'll have this done. So, 3 hours from now, technically speaking, World Complete will be done. The speedrun guide will be finished. Busy with washing and cleaning? Oh, okay. Alright. I was going to ask if you wanted to, like, watch something. That's why. But no problem. That's okay. Um, okay, okay. That's some speed. I was thinking in one week is solid. <laughs> I mean, well, when I normally do my world completes, I normally, like, yeah, I get them done in about 13, 14 hours. But, um, I don't freaking do it in, like, four days in a row, like, I'm doing it for you guys right now. I actually just do, like, a little bit, like, every third or fourth day. I just do a bit of world complete every third or fourth day when I'm like not doing something else. Like the time I'm streaming for you guys, I'm not doing world complete. I'm literally like doing content. Like I'm doing fractals. I mean, I guess technically speaking, you can, can you can count this as content as well. But no, I'm doing like freaking fractals. I'm doing strikes with you guys. I'm um, doing some PVP, world v world stuff. 
Like, I'm not doing world complete. <laughs> in my off time when I'm not streaming, that's when I do, like, world comp every now and then. And I normally do it in about a week. Like, I don't do world comp in, like, three days, four days, like I'm going to do for you guys right now. Th th this is the third day, by the way. We've only been streaming world comp. Well, we'll strike missions speak first with the viewers. But we've only been doing world comp. This character is three days old, and we are 80% done on the world complete. Like, as soon as this character's done, I'm just gonna take off the explorations and delete the character, and another day I'll do world comp again. But that's not gonna be on stream. Would you be interested in 17 glyphs of exploration? Um. Yes. <laughs> Depends what it's from, though. I actually put a bit of a leash on my own Discord server. Um, I told people I'm not really looking to buy from outside my own trading network. But I mean, if you can convince me somehow to take in this person, I'll consider it. It kind of depends on how much AP they have and a few other things that I want to check. Okay, um, this heart is um, a little bit tedious, but there are some priorities. Okay, so priority one check if the event up here is actually ready uh sometimes the captain will be walking around yes he is okay so this is number one priority first before you do anything else activate the event pretty much you basically just fight him you, you pretty much fight the captain here um the captain gives a fair amount of progress for this heart doesn't take too long to kill he doesn't have a very very high uh hit hitbox get that done first um when you defeat him the second priority for this heart is the centaurs located in this area And doesn't use them. I might yoink one for myself. A guy from Twitch I know has 17. Yeah, but it, like... Is he trustworthy? Like, how much achievement points does he have? The reason why I asked how many achievement points he has is because that's a way to determine if you want to lose your account or not. Twenty-six point three k. Okay, that's a lot. Okay, that guy clearly cares about his account. So yeah, I'll ask him then. Sure, I'll be interested in that. Um, this guy might be going a little bit too far for me to do anything. Oh, right, never mind. I can I can them here. Uh, you create thieves to complete fast, or you do it on all classes. Um, I mostly do. I I have done ward complete on just about every single class once, at least once. Um, but the one I mostly do it on is my thief. Yes, I mostly do ward comp on my thief. I have one character slot pretty much dedicated to doing ward complete. So I just make the character, do ward comp, get my explorations, delete the character, remake a new character, make it another thief, do ward comp. Once I'm done, delete the character, make a new character. I have one character slot pretty much dedicated to, to farming ward completes. But I always do it on thief because thief is the fastest. There is nothing faster. Like until someone can do like a freaking faster time than my record, on a different class, then I'll, then I'll be convinced. But until that day, Thief is the thief is king. You must have a lot of terms of knowledge. I don't, actually. That is literally the thing that holds me back, is the compound resources. So even when I get the two gifts of exploration done, I can't make the freaking legendary weapons because I don't have enough spirit shards to turn them into weapons. It gives me a really, really good use of my karma because I, for, like, for those people sitting on a crap ton of karma, doing world comps eats up a crap ton of karma because I get to buy obsidian shards. But I literally can't turn these into legendary weapons, like, as soon as I'm done because I don't have enough spirit shards because I eat up my spirit shards. The Tombs of Knowledge I get relatively passively because I do world v world in my downtime. Like, actually, I sometimes even do it on stream. I do world v world roaming, I do PvP. You guys watch me do this. Um, so that's one way I get my Tombs of Knowledge, to keep leveling up characters, but no, I, like, right now, 
I have a total of 18 tombs of knowledge. It's not enough to make a new character. So until I have like pretty much enough account bound resources to make another character, then I'll go make another character for Wardcom. I have 26,000 spirit shards. Well, you clearly either like hoarding or you don't know how to turn them into gold. <laughs> as soon as I discovered how to turn my spirit shards into gold, I did that. I had 9,000 spirit shards. I turned every single one of those shards into gold in about six months. It took me about six months to process all of it, but I made a juicy amount of gold from it. <laughs> What's your record then? My record? My, you mean my time? It's two years between... Yeah. If you meant my time, my fastest time for doing what complete is 11 hours and 39 minutes. And that was done over a couple of days. Not four days like I'm going to do on stream. Um, how do you sell these gifts? Okay, so... Gifts of Exploration can be turned, along with a few other account bound items, can be turned into a thing called a Gift of Mastery. Gift of Mastery is one of the four major components to make legendary weapons. So basically, so one, this is one of the ways how I became rich in this game. Um, I am a large player in the legendary market through my own trading community, like my own, my own Discord, but also a large network of players that I deal with. Um, there are lots of people that enjoy doing Ward Complete, whether it's a hobby for them or it's just something to get them gold. Um, I basically send them all the materials needed to make a legendary weapon using their account bound resources. They make the legendary weapon, they send me the legendary weapon, they get their payments. It's a nice way for people that have like a couple of like explorations lying around or something to turn into gold. And that's something I've been doing for about two years with people. That's a, that's a lot of Mystic Forge clicking. It is a lot of Mystic Forge clicking. Yes, it is. I mean, I always... If you're talking about Clovers, I always do time stun. I always do time stun on my Clovers. Times one just takes too long. And I actually collect data. I actually do have um, a fair amount of data collected as well on the Mystic Forge Clover. I have almost 9,000 collected rolls for Clovers. And the Clover stuff is actually stand corrected from, like, the wiki. The wiki says 33%. I can confirm it is 33%. As far as my pool of data says, which is 9,000 Mystic Coins and Ectos. 9,000. Um, it, 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 it's sitting at, it's, my, my data is about 33% as well. I'm talking about 29k shards into God. Okay, so Blue Kanov, um... The way, okay, so there are multiple ways you can turn Spirit Shards into God. Um... One of the most common ways, which I'm sure a lot of people in here have heard, is pretty much converting tier 5 mats into tier 6. So when I say tier 5 into tier 6, I'm talking about totems, blood, bones, fangs, scales, sacks. Turn these tier 5 mats into tier 6. Um, that is one way to get a decent amount of gold with your own uh, spirit shards, pretty much self-promoting mats. The alternative, and this is slightly more valuable, thank you for the follow by the way, the slightly more better way to get more bang for your spirit shard is buying, um, creating some of the very, very exotic, exotic weapons? <laughs> very, very rare exotic weapons. So these are things like the Volcanus. I'm always going to use Volcanus as an example. Volcanus is one of these items worth a couple hundred gold, this exotic Great sword is worth 500 gold. Another one is um, infinite light. This is worth almost 400 gold. Now these exotic weapons um, you can craft in the Mystic Forge, which eat up some Mystic coins and some Spirit shards. Now these technically will 
make your individual spirit shards worth more instead of the 42 silver that it's valued in t5 to t6 map promotion but you need to take into consideration that if you try to make more gold out of your spirit shards by making the very very rare exotic weapons you need to account the time taken that the weapon will stay on the trading post because these items do not have a high are not known for having a high velocity they could possibly be in the trading post for days two weeks to possibly a month that is up to you how long you want to wait how long you can afford having that item sitting in the trading post now remember you never really want to instant sell um you never want to instant sell um th these items you always want to list listing is always the best option you want to do there but that isn't there is a pretty much two ways to convert spirit shards into gold. T5 to T6 mats um, is always a good way to do it. And of course, if you can find an ind like another player, like someone willing to buy your T6 mats, you will save yourself about 5%. You'll save yourself about 5% instead of converting those T5 into T6 mats and then selling those T6 mats on the trading post. If you can find someone willing to buy those mats, you will get yourself a little bit more profit on top of the profit you're already going to make. Trying to find someone to buy those rare exotic weapons to save yourself the TP waiting time and the TP tax is not going to be viable because not a lot of people buy those things. They are low. They have a demand, but it's not very high. <laughs> What's up, Linker? It's fine doing T... Yes, yes. It's perfectly fine. Doing converting T5 into T T6 mats is a very, very liquid way to get gold it's, it's it's a good way it's definitely recommended because t6 mats have a high velocity they are always being traded in the trading post and between people so you will almost always have a buyer for them just check for, yeah check yeah exactly yeah check prices before doing it um now um there is one particular T5 mat you don't want to convert because it's not worth doing, and that's the dust. So incandescent, incandescent, I don't know how the hell to say it. The T5 incandescent dust, you do not want to convert into crystalline dust. It is not worth doing. In fact, it is a loss. Every other T5 mat is worth converting. Blood, totems, fangs, sacks, claws, everything else but the dust is worth converting. Do not convert the dust, otherwise you will actually lose gold. Ah, oh, man. Sorry to bombard you guys with all that information. But someone asked. <laughs> I thought that recipe didn't exist. Can you even convert? You can, yes. You can convert dust. You can convert dust. It exists. But because the economy has put dust in such a method that it's not profitable to convert it, you don't want to do it. The game isn't going to just take the recipe out because the economy said, no, this is not worth doing. It's still going to be there. Just don't be a sucker and freaking convert dust. <laughs> Rigged. Oops, just missed it. Wait. Actually, yeah, yeah. I think the giveaway is closed now. Alright, um, I have that one heart left to do, so I'm gonna quickly go do that heart real quick here. And that was pretty much part four of the World Comp Guide done. Now, um, I'm gonna use a Twitch poll very, very shortly here. Because I wanna know if you... If you guys actually just want me to kind of just continue, like... You guys want me to just continue doing the like more maps or something? Like I'll cut this basically into into part um into part five, or do you guys want me to like go do something else like PvP, World v World? What about converting putrid essence? Okay, putrid essence is 
like a lost cause. <laughs> if you're someone sitting on stacks of putrid essence, there is literally nothing you can do to turn that into gold. As far as I know. Otherwise, I probably would tell you guys. Unless it was like super, super like lucrative. Then, um, no, I probably wouldn't tell you guys then at that point. <laughs> Yeah, I'll pick out the winner for the stack. Wait, the giveaway actually closed, right? Yeah, the giveaway did close. Okay. I will pick out a winner um, shortly, shortly. Soon, soon, soon. Just want to finish off this heart. Oh my god, and now the event spawned. Okay, when this event spawns, this is the best way to do this heart because you get stacks and stacks of set of uh, centaurs that like come here. Like, you'll start seeing some centaur waves coming in this direction. This is the best event. Uh, this whole thing here is the best event for this heart. This major event. It's a wonderful event. Of course, um, you don't want to go too far. Like, where this guy is standing right now is pretty much just at heart range. Like, you don't want to go too far here. Alright, cool. We got this heart done now. Alright. Um, and that rounds up. Part 4. We have done all of Krytar and Brisbane Wildlands. And we are... Okay, so just to show you guys a quick... Preview of what we're currently at. Um, we are currently 11 hours and 10 minutes. 11 hours, 10 minutes, and we are at 82% world complete. 